In linguistics, the Indo-European ablaut is a system of apophony in the Proto-Indo-European language. It has significantly influenced modern Indo-European languages, all of which have inherited the feature. An example of ablaut in English is the strong verb sing, sang, sung and its related nansong, a paradigm inherited directly from the Proto-Indo-European stage of the language. History of the concept. The term ablaut was coined in the early 19th century by linguist Jacob Grimm. However, the phenomenon of the Indo European ablaut itself was first recorded more than 2000 years earlier by the Sanskrit grammarians and was codified by Panini in his Ashtadhyayi, where the terms guna and vrddhi were used to describe the phenomena now known respectively as the full grade and lengthened grade. In the context of European languages, the phenomenon was first described in the early 18th century by the Dutch linguist Lambert ten Kate, in his book Gemien Chapters in de Gotische Sprache en de Nederdeutsche. Overview of Proto-Indo-European Since Ablaud was a regular system in Proto-Indo-European but survives only as a regular or partially regular variations in the recorded languages, any explanation of Ablaud has to begin with an overview of Pi. Proto-Indo-European is the hypothetical parent language from which most of the modern and ancient European languages evolved. By comparing the recorded forms from Pie's daughter languages, linguists can infer the forms of the parent language. However, it is not certain how it was realized phonetically, and the reconstructions are to be understood as an encoding of the deduced phonemes. There is no correct way to pronounce them. Note that established convention has all pi forms are marked with an asterisk to indicate that they are hypothetical. For more details on these reconstructions, see Proto-Indo-European language, laryngeal theory and comparative method. Ablaud and vowel gradation. Vowel gradation is any vowel difference between two related words or two forms of the same word. The difference need not be indicated in the spelling. There are many kinds of vowel gradation in English and other languages, which are discussed generally in the article Apophony. Some involve a variation in vowel length, others in vowel coloring and others the complete disappearance of a vowel. For the study of European languages, one of the most important instances of vowel gradation is the Indo-European ablaut, remnants of which can be seen in the English verbs ride, road, ridden, or fly, flew, flown. For simply learning English grammar, it is enough to note that these verbs are irregular, but understanding why they have unusual forms that seem irregular requires digging back into the grammar of the reconstruction constructed proto-language. Where they were regular, ablaut is the oldest and most extensive single source of vowel gradation in the Indo-European languages and must be distinguished clearly from other forms of gradation, which developed later, such as Germanic umlaut of the results of modern English word stress patterns. Confusingly, in some contexts, the terms ablaut, vowel gradation, apophony, and vowel alternation are used synonymously, especially in synchronic comparisons but historical linguists prefer to keep ablaut for the specific Indo-European phenomenon, which is the meaning intended by the linguists who first coined the word. Ablaud grades. In Proto-Indo-European, the basic, inherent vowel of most syllables was a short e. Ablaud is the name of the process whereby this short e changed, becoming short o, long e, long o sometimes disappearing entirely to leave no vowel at all. Thus, ablaud turned short e into the following sounds. If a syllable had a short e, it is said to be in the e grade, or full grade. When it had no vowel, it is said to be in the zero grade. 
Syllables with long vowels are said to be in length and grade. A classic example of the five grades of ablaut in a single root is provided by the different case forms of two closely related Greek words. In the following table, an acute accent marks the syllable carrying the word stress, a macron marks long vowels and the syllable in bold is the one illustrating the different vowel gradations. In this unusually neat example, the following can be seen. A switch to the zero grade when the word stress moves to the following syllable. A switch to the O grade when the word stress moves to the preceding syllable. A lengthening of the vowel when the syllable is in word final position. Dot. As with most reconstructions, however, scholars differ about the details of this example. One way to think of this system is that Proto-Indo-European originally had only one vowel, short e, and over time, it changed according to phonetic context, so the language started to develop a more complex vowel system. Thus, it has often been speculated that an original E grade underwent two changes in some phonetic environments. Under certain circumstances, it changed to O and in others, it disappeared entirely. However, that is not certain. The phonetic conditions that control the ablaut have never been determined, and the position of the word stress may not have been a key factor at all. There are many counterexamples to the proposed rules. Asterisk de was and its nominative plural asterisk de was show pretonic and post tonic e grade, respectively, and asterisk wlkos has an accented zero grade. Length and grades Many examples of length and grades, including those listed above, are not directly conditioned by a blout. Instead, they are a result of sound changes like like Cimmerania's law and Stang's law, which caused compensatory lengthening of originally short vowels. In the examples above, Cimmerania's law affected the older sequences asterisk ph 2 te acute rs and asterisk npe acute h2 torus, changing them to asterisk ph 2 tr and asterisk npe acute h2 tor. Thus, these forms were originally in the regular unlength and E grade and O grade. Such length and vowels were, however, later grammaticalized and spread to other words in which the change did not occur. Nevertheless, there are examples of true length and grades, in which short E alternates with long E. Examples of the verbs with not an inflection, and nouns like asterisk MHNS moon, genitive asterisk ME acute HNSOS. Alternations of this type were rare, however, and the E tilde O tilde alternation was the most common by far. The longer grade was rarer still and may not have actually been a part of the ablaut system at all. Zero grade. The zero grade of ablaud may appear difficult for speakers of English. However, there are several languages who show fricatives and even plosives in syllable nucleus. To understand, one must be aware that there were a number of sounds that were consonants in principle but could operate in ways analogous to vowels. The four syllabic sonorants, the three laryngeals and the two semivowels. The syllabic sonorants are M, N, R and L, which could be consonants much as they are in English, but they could also be held on as continuants and carry a full syllable stress and then are transcribed with a small circle beneath them. The laryngeals could be pronounced as consonants, in which case they were probably variations on the H sound and so normally transcribed as H1, H2 and H3. However, they could also carry a syllable stress, in which case they were more like vowels. Thus, some linguists prefer to transcribe them E1, E2 and E3. The vocalic pronunciation may have originally involved the consonantal sounds with a very slight schwa before and or after the consonant. In pre-vocalic positions, the phonemes U and I were semivowels, probably pronounced like English W and Y, but they could also become pure vowels when the following ablaud vowel reduced to zero. When U and I came in post-vocalic positions, the result was a diphthong. Dot. 
Our blout is nevertheless regular and looks like this. Thus, any of these could replace the a blout vowel when it was reduced to the zero grade. The pattern CVRC could become CRC. However, not every pi syllable was capable of forming a zero grade. Some consonant structures inhibited it in particular cases, or completely. Thus, for example, although the preterite plural of a Germanic strong verb is derived from the zero grade. Classes 4 and 5 have instead vowels representing the length and e gray, as the stems of these verbs could not have sustained a zero grade in this position. Zero grade is said to be from pre pi syncope in unaccented syllables, but in some cases the lack of accent does not pose zero grade. Asterisk de wo, nominative plural asterisk est god. There does not seem to be a rule governing the unaccented syllables that take zero grade and the ones that take stronger grades. Nowadays a few Indo-Europeanists reject the syncope hypothesis, and instead understand early pi as a polysynthetic and templatic type language with discontinuous consonant roots and vowel transfixes. A grade it is still a matter of debate whether pi had an original a vowel at all. In later pi, the disappearance of the laryngeal H2 could leave a coloring and this may explain all occurrences of A in later pi. However, some argue controversially that the E grade could sometimes be replaced by an A grade without the influence of a laryngeal, which might help to explain the vowels in class 6 Germanic verbs, for example. Subsequent development, although pi had only this one, basically regular, ablaud sequence, the development in the daughter languages is frequently far more complicated, and few reflect the original system as neatly as Greek. Various factors, such as vowel harmony, assimilation with nasals, or the effect of the presence of laryngeals in the Indo-European roots as well as the subsequent loss in most daughter languages mean that a language may have several different vowels representing a single vowel in the parent language. In particular, the zero grade was often subject to modification from changes in the pronunciation of syllabic sonorants. For example, in Germanic, syllabic sonorants acquired an apenthetic U, thus converting the original zero grade to a new U grade in many words. Thus, while ablaud survived in some form in all Indo-European languages, it became progressively less systematic over time. Ablaud explains vowel differences between related words of the same language. For example, English strike and stroke both come from the same i.e. root asterisk steg. The former comes from the E grade, the latter from the O grade. German Berg and Berg both come from the root asterisk Berg, which presumably meant high. The former comes from the E grade, the latter from the zero grade. Dot. Ablad also explains vowel differences between cognates in different languages. English tooth comes from Germanic asterisk tanth est genitive asterisk tund is. This form is related to Latin dens, dentus and Greek delta omicron upsilon sigma delta omicron nu tau omicron sigma with the same meaning, and is reflected in the English words dentist and orthodontic. One reconstructed i.e. form is asterisk dons, genitive asterisk dnte acutus. The consonant differences can be explained by regular sound shifts in primitive Germanic but not the vowel differences. By the regular laws of sound changes, Germanic a can originate from pio, but unusually goes back to a syllabic n. Dot. The explanation is that the Germanic and Greek nominative forms developed from the O grade, the Latin word and the Germanic genitive from the zero grade. Going a step further back, some scholars reconstruct asterisk H1 dons, 
for the zero grade of the root asterisk h1 ed to eat, and the participle low nt and explain it as the eating one. English foot comes from the length and a grade of asterisk ped. Greek pi omicron upsilon sigma pi omicron delta omicron sigma and Latin pes pedis come from the O grade and the E grade respectively. Dot. For the English-speaking non-specialist, a good reference work for quick information on IE roots, including the difference of ablaut grade behind related lexemes, is Calvert Watkins, The American Heritage Dictionary of Indo-European Roots, 2nd edition, Boston and Amp, New York 2000. Grammatical function. In Pi, there were already ablaut differences within the paradigms of verbs and nouns. These were not the main markers of grammatical form, since the inflection system served this purpose, but they must have been significant secondary markers. An example of ablaut in the paradigm of the noun in Pi can be found in asterisk petis, from which the English words ford and port derive. An example in a verb is asterisk b-e-y-d, to wait. In the daughter languages, these came to be important markers of grammatical distinctions. The vowel change in the Germanic strong verb, for example, is the direct descendant of that seen in the Indo-European verb paradigm. Examples in modern English are the following. It was in this context of Germanic verbs that ablaut was first described, and this is still what most people primarily associate with the phenomenon. A fuller description of ablaut operating in English, German and Dutch verbs and of the historical factors governing these can be found at the article Germanic strong verb. The same phenomenon is displayed in the verb tables of Latin, ancient ancient Greek and Sanskrit. Examples of ablaut as a grammatical marker in Latin of the vowel changes in the perfect stem of verbs. Ablaut can often explain apparently random irregularities. For example, the verb to be in Latin has the forms est and sunt. The equivalent forms in German are very similar, ist and sind. The same forms are present in Slavic languages, est and sut. The difference between singular and plural in these languages is easily explained. The pi root is asterisk h1s. In the singular, the stem is stressed, so it remains in the e grade, and it takes the inflection t. In the plural, however, the inflection e acute n ti was stressed, causing the stem to reduce to the zero grade, asterisk h1. 1 s e acute n t i asterisk h 1 s e acute n t i see main article Indo-European copula some of the more philological functions of the various grades are as follows e grade present tense of thematic verbs root stress present singular of athematic verbs root stress accusative and vocative singular nominative accusative and vocative dual nominative plural of nouns o grade verbal nouns stem stressed masculine action nouns ending stressed feminine originally collective action nouns ending stressed masculine agent nouns dot Nominative, vocative and accusative singular of certain nouns. Present tense of causative verbs, stem stress. Perfect singular tense, zero grade. Present dual and plural tense of athematic verbs, ending stress. Perfect dual and plural tense, ending stress. Past participles, ending stress. Some verbs in the aorist. Oblique singular, dual, plural, accusative plural of nouns, length and gray. Nominative singular of many nouns. Present singular of certain athematic verbs. Some verbs in the aorist. Some derived verbal nouns. Dot. Many examples of length and grade roots in the daughter languages are actually caused by the effect of laryngeals and of Cimmeranese law and Stang's law, which operated within Indo-European times. 